Hello. Uh, I'm Aditi Machado, and I'm going to read um, three poems. Um, uh, only one of them is not by Mary Jo, which I'll explain. Uh, it's a poem by Jennifer Cronovat, who, like me, is a former student of Mary Jo's. Um, and this is uh, for people who were at the talks earlier, uh, a little theme that I want to continue of um, friendships and collaborations that Mary Jo has um, with some of her students. And uh, I know that uh, she and Jenny are great friends. They share a love of languages and translation and other joyful things. Um, so um, this is a poem by Jenny as a way to conjure her from Berlin. Um, and I also just got a text from another uh, former student, Neil Rosenthaler, saying he wished he could be here. So hi from Neil. Okay. So this is, the mountains are made into a road and the land has direction. On one side is the country and on the other side is the country, its character residing in roofs. When I speak the road, I am spilling the water and dropping my plate. When I am in the city, and use the language the city was built within, I am spilling myself into a lake. Or they who know the language are twice what I want to say, and tall, not what. When I arrived, I was worse at speaking, but speaking was either sky or dirt, and now the sky is a different shape, and the words, not symbols, but layers of skin. Okay. So these are next to our Mary Jo's poems from The Bride of E. Um, and I'll read uh, first the very first poem from that book. A, B, C plus E. Cosmic aloneness is the bride of existence. A pack of young flirts was patrolling the party. They were cultural outsiders consumed with what? their own notion of beauty as reflected in the shine more mirror of a man's pants, or nothing but midnight and no one is counting. They were practitioners. They admitted to the barman of psychological materialism, explaining they had read both Sartre and de Beauvoir and believed in the cerebellum, the thalamus and the lower brain, and that between the lower and the upper parts, there must be room for them Nail, nothingness aside. Indeed, the evening was a spectacular bacchanalia, the girls lugging their blind drunk partners around the floor, one sitting it out with a volume of the collected Camus. That one was imperious, the word is de Beauvoir's. The club was plunged into almost total darkness, with violinists wandering about, playing soulful Russian music into the guests' ears. If only it were possible to tell the truth, exclaimed Camus at one point. There was vodka and champagne, both in quantities extremely beautiful and nice for getting tight, and dancing cheek to cheek between the exchange of furtive kisses and giggles every time one of the chaps said, don't leave me, I love you, I'll always love you which they took as irrefutable evidence of a general greed for human warmth, that is for touch, even among the agonized post-adolescent dreamers who morphed on the dance floor that night into naughty boys, echoing the girls' questions of, how shall we live? What shall we do? Words without end, without weight. And uh, the third and last poem is O is an Outside. Um, and I got to see drafts of these poems uh, just a few minutes ago in Special Collections. That was exciting. O is an Outside. Outside is the pastoral aspect, the green, the stream. We stepped on a rock, on a jagged slab of concrete pavement thrown there. How, when? The water broke against the edge. A soap suds billowed up. Why? Sink, water, and laundry residue. So, not a stream, not a rock. A waste ditch deep and wide enough to seem like a landscape with a slab of broken concrete. 
domestic porcelain fixture, cosmetic veneer. The kitchen sink, place towels eye beam to eye beam, make a chamber. The sleeping smell of the slanted hill, the worried sound of inside, the clarity of the forceful eye, the ear, the rain, beginning to drive. The green elbow, repeating symptoms, fever, chills, surgery. Now the green elbow scars instead. What did you say? Yes, the scar fills in for perfection. For the quotidian cardinal male red who said, the church at the bottom of the hill, the white vestments of the priest at the door, goodbye to the flock, the funnies, the beetle bailey green uniforms, the uncle, the khaki, the uniform hill slope, the propensity for fever, the fever pitch of the hill, the scar formed from a box. Of course, outside leads in. I never said it didn't. I'm living, aren't I? Bleeding from the elbow. That won't heal. For my shoe, I cut cardboard every morning. The shape of the heel. Fine. Outside is also out. In the shadows. The prison of. Runaway fantasies. The march in the courtyard. The open mind wandering dazed around. A baby crying, a background. Eternal imagined judgment. Terror of being. That mysterious conceptual nothing. A worn electrical wire connects all the lights. They go and you say, good, that little irritating suspense is over. The hollowing weight. The stupid puncture of rejection that in the moment wears a human face. A scowl oftener and oftener. Chrysanthemum's color, the larger new swallowing the previous smaller ones. Boomf, 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 MacArthur Park. Someone left the cake out in the rain. A surreal film in black and white. On and off the interior radio through which a pin is under a nail. Or you don't know what that's like? Either way. Let's take that wiring apart and see how it works like that, as if it could be done. It's such a distance to move across the green grass expanse. Walking, <coughs> is it better to keep the eyes closed or open to an assailant sand grate in the psyche? The four-story inventory mocks. I had the common experience plus the less. Listen, how common is that? After the fall, the terrible, empty. Thank you, Timothy. That was, I can't believe I have to go after you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mary Jo. <laughs> um, so I, I know you guys have my bio, but I'm another one of Mary Jo's uh, uh, students. Uh, you say former students, but you, you don't ever really stop. And also, strangely enough, now her colleague. And I think that's another example of uh, Mary Jo's generosity, that she'll, she'll lift you up too like that. Um, OK. So the very first time I met Mary Jo Bang, I was newly arrived in St. Louis from my home in Bangalore, India. It was late August of 2010, and I had not read many American poets, nor had I met one. In fact, I hadn't met many poets at all, and here was Mary Jo, my first and still enduring vision of who a poet can be. Fiercely intelligent, fiercely kind, also funny and stylish. I remember asking Mary Jo who I should read among the Americans, the Americans to me being a strange genre of human being. <laughs> Still so. <laughs> I remember she said Barbara Guest, whose book Fair Realism I immediately devoured. Rereading Guest in preparation for today, it occurred to me that while Mary Jo is of course a wholly different poet, some things Guest writes seem like an Ars Poetica for her own writing, but also for Mary Jo's. Um, and I'll read a few sections from this poem called The Screen of Distance to show you what I mean. 
I think she's writing about Mary Jo. <laughs> um, one. On a wall shadowed by lights from the distance is the screen. Icons come to it dressed in capes, and their eyes reflect the journeys their nomadic eyes reach from level earth. Narratives are in the room where the screen waits, suspended like the frame of a girder the worker will place upon an axis and thus make a frame which he fills with a plot or a quarter inch of poetry to encourage nature into his building and the tree leaning against it, the tree casting language upon the screen. Six, Beryl became a distraction as one speaks of color field or someone as a colorist or of color predominant. So the paper on which the poem would rest was grainy with color, flashing lights and the depth, the deepness of the country lane on which shadows found repose was a wilderness of color. Ditches and trees lost their contours. I created a planned randomness in which color behaved like a star. Nine, the bride raised the cloud, settled on her aspen head, and stepping away from her bachelors, she sees like wands the poem I handed her. A life glitters under leaves piled for anonymity. She would lead us through glass to view the enigmatic hill where a castle slung a shadow. So of course there's the bride, that's a very important figure in Mary Jo's work, but also especially the sentence. I created a planned randomness in which color behaved like a star. That to me is Mary Jo. I tend to think poems are the best essays, essays could ever be, and this poem essay by Guest really gets at this thing language can do, wants to do, if you love it, if you let it get to not representing but doing the thing of experience. An emphasis falls on reality because you worked language, worked with language to make that emphasis. And suddenly reality is extra real, cold and hard in the cold hard times, and bejeweled, scintillating, when skies want to pierce you with their bejeweled, scintillating lights. One finds these emphases falling in Mary Jo's writing. And it comes out of, I believe, a deep love for and curiosity about language. You see, it in, you see it in the odd way a line suddenly stops and swerves, or the way a colloquial expression gets turned on its weird little head, the bright, mean poke of self-reflexivity, as when Mary Jo writes in the eye like a strange balloon. My, what little sense you make, said the wolf to Mary Jo. <laughs> This love of language, its ordinariness and extraordinariness, can be found in all of Mary Jo's books, including her translations of Dante and of the Japanese poets she co-translates with Yuki Tanaka, um, another former student of Mary Jo, now collaborator. So there's a theme of these enduring friendships and collaborations. Um, in an interview with the Center for the Art of Translation, Mary Jo describes her experience translating with Yuki in this way. With each new poem we translated, I better understood how to read through all the layers of meaning and saw how a reader has to rapidly dismantle each term, whether a Japanese character or an English or French word Takiguchi has dropped into the poem and then put it back together again in a manner where something new is suggested. With each new dismantling, or reconstruction, more sense is made, and more pleasure is potentially derived. A single meaning becomes multiple possible meanings. Associatively, the mind is pushed in several directions. This methodology becomes an argument about how language works and about how the world works. And I have come to believe about how Takiguchi wanted his work to be read. I love how language works and world works are drawn together there. Um, so love of language, love of possibility itself and its discovery. That's what I read in Mary Jo's poetry. Um, that's what she teaches and that's what I've learned from her.